Hi, I'm Brittany and welcome to my channel. In this video today, I'll show you how I paint these watercolor Easter tags. All right, to start off, I'll show you what you need to make these Easter tags. I have this hole punch that creates the shape of these tags right here. So you don't need these, you can make your own, but it's just really convenient to do it. I'm just gonna punch a couple of these out real fast. And I'm using cans and watercolor paper. Once you've cut out the shape of the tag, you stick it back into the top slot, push down again, and you get that little hole to put the tie in. So we've got our tags ready to go. If you don't have a punch, you could just cut out the shape of a tag. These are about three by two inches, and then you could just cut the corners off and put a little hole in it with the hole punch. The materials you need to make these cards are your watercolor paints. The paints on this palette are Winsor Newton Professional Grade and Daniel Smith. And then I've got a couple of my smaller paint brushes. This is a round six from the Pigeon Letters, and this is a round three Princeton Heritage brush. I've got a sponge and a paper towel to blot my paint brushes on. And of course, you'll need um, a pot of water. And that's it. So we can go ahead and get started. Before we begin painting the tags, I want to show you the roses and little flowers that we're going to paint. So I'll start with a, a darker pink color for the center of my flower. I'm mixing together Windsor Newton's Windsor Red Deep, and this is Opera Rose Pink. So with a pretty thick paint consistency, I'm going to paint the center of my rose creating these little C strokes that just circle around each other. I'm going to rinse off my brush, get more water, less paint for this next row of petals. Push down and touch into the paint that I've already laid down. Let it bleed into this next row of petals. And we're not going to do anything too fancy on these cards. I'm just going to make these simple little flowers. While the paint is still wet, I'll pick up some darker paint, drip it along the edges, the inside edges of the rose. And you can go back in and darken up the center if you need to. Just a simple little rose like that. Then for the other flowers I'm going to paint, I'll pick up a light pink watery mixture on my paintbrush. I'm going to paint these teardrop shapes pointing in towards the center of this flower. And I'll paint five petals. It doesn't matter how many you paint. Just I like to paint five. That you can go around and fix the edges of your petals. If you're not happy with it. While it's so wet, again, I'll pick up the darker paint with not a lot of water. I'll drop this in the center here. Just tap it in. We'll blend out into that wet paint. It's just about like that. Then, if I want one of those flowers to look like it's on its side, I will paint a moon shape or kind of a crescent shape like this. And then three petals over here on this side. Those same teardrop shapes with the point pointing to the middle. For the darker center, I'll pick up my paint. Tap it in right here, and that's it. Those are the three flowers that we'll be painting on these cards. For the leaves, I'll just paint a simple shape. Take my brush, the little stem, push my brush down. These are just going to be really tiny, so don't push too hard. I'm just using the tip. Did one side, and then I'll paint this side and bring it to a point where they meet together. Again, I'll just lightly. Drag my brush down, push down gently, 
twist and pull up. And do the same thing on this other side. Push down gently, push and pull up. And those might be even a little bit too big for this tag, for the side that we're doing. So really they're going to be about this size. See if I can make a little branch of each. About like that. I want them to be a little bit darker. I'll pick up some perlene green. Drop it in here to the wet paint. I'll try one more here. So spin, push down softly. So practice these as many times as you need to, and then we will paint them on our Easter basket tags. So go ahead and practice these flowers and leaves as many times as you need to until you feel comfortable, and then we'll paint them on our Easter basket tags. The first tag I'm going to make is for my son Graham, and his favorite color is green. So I'm going to paint this in a monochromatic theme and just use my greens for this one. I'm just going to paint the shape of an egg first of all. Rounded at the top, wider at the bottom. And you don't even have to paint the bottom of the egg because we're going to paint some flowers down here. So I'll stop about there. Fill it in. While it's still wet, I'm going to drop in a darker green. I was using sap green there, and this is my perlene green that I'm going to darken it with and drop in a shadow side. A little bit less water on my paintbrush, I'll just drop in the perlene green on the left side of the egg here. Move a bit around the edges too. Make it just a bit darker. Now I'll just go ahead and let that dry and then we'll do the flowers afterwards. This next step is optional, but I'm going to take a darker green color with thick paint, not a lot of water, and I'm just going to put dots all over this egg so it looks like a speckled egg. Just like that. And I'm going to let those dots dry and then we're going to move on to painting the flowers and leaves. We'll start painting the flowers now and I will start, I'll bring this example in, I will start with the rose right here in the middle and we'll paint a few of the, and then we'll paint a few of the five petal flowers next to it. So I'm going to start with perlene green for the center of this rose. I'm painting those little sea stroke for the center. Not like that. Rinsing off my brush. Pick up a lighter green. For this next row of petals, we're just going to press down on our brush harder, make them thicker. They're still just wrapping them around each other like those C's in the center. Now you just shape the rose until it's the size that you want it. I'm just going to make it about that big. And while that paint is still wet, I'll pick up my perlene green, a little bit of sap green, and drop that back in. We'll give this row some depth. It looks like it has some shadows in the petals. Darken up that center again. Leave it just like that. You can mix up a lighter green with some yellow, which is aureolan and sap green. And I'll start with this color for our five petal flowers. We paint these petals again, pointing towards the center. It's okay if it touches into that rose. And I'll let it dry for a second before I drop in the darker paint for the center. And let's paint a couple more over here. Maybe one 
is bending this way. So I'll paint my crescent shape. Start with that center petal, pointing towards the middle. I'll just paint three of them like that. Probably paint one more right here. Before I paint the last flower, I'll drop in our dark green for the center here. The pearling green. And this one, let's see if it's ready. It's not quite ready. I'll let that dry a little bit more. I'll paint one more flower right here. On its side. And then we'll fill the rest in with leaves. I'm picking up pearling green. And I'll dab this here in the center of this flower. It's facing that way. Same with this little guy. A little right there. Now for my leaves, I'm going to grab some dark Kings Gray and Perlene Green and do a really dark green. And we'll put in a little branch of leaves right here. Pushing down really gently with the tip of my brush. Come out right here. Put two leaves over here. I we'll want to put a bunch up front right here. Start with a branch of three. Tuck some leaves in over here. And right here. I'll lighten that green a little bit and pop some more leaves in. Okay, they overlap each other. I'm going to put them where you think you need them. Just fill it in with as many leaves as you need. Okay, and that one is finished. We just need to let it dry, and then we'll write our name across the top. Okay, the next dog I'm going to paint in shades of purple for my niece, Emily. Pick up a watery mixture of my mineral violet. And make that egg shape. You want to fill that in quickly before the edges dry. And while it's still wet, pick up the darker color of the mineral violet and drop it on one side. It's still wet over here. I'm going to drop some in on this side. And I'll let that dry before I add the dots in the flowers and leaves. Okay, now my egg is dry. I'll pick up some dark purple and make my little polka. Now I'll move on to the flowers. Pick up my dark mineral violet for the center of my rose, right about here. Get those little sea strokes going around each other for the center of the rose. Rinse off my brush. Make it a little lighter value of that purple. And make the next row of petals. And I'm just shaping it get to the shape that I want it to be. And I'll drop in some more mineral violet. Oh, 
Okay, and for the five petal flowers, I'll put one right here, facing on its side, pointing over here to the right. And then I'll also put one next to that, leaning down this way. And I'll make one right over here with the five petals pointing to the center. This one will kind of be tucked back behind that rose petal. And I'll put one more pointing down this way. When you're painting these flowers, don't be afraid to tuck them in to each other, have some overlapping. You want it to be close together with not a lot of white space between. Now while these are wet, I'll drop in a darker color in the center. I'm going to mix Payne's Gray and Mineral Violet to get a super dark purple for these two over here. Now for the leaves on this purple pad, I'll do the same thing with my mineral violet and Payne's gray and get a dark, deep violet, more of a blue violet. Lightly with the tip of my brush, create these cute little leaves coming off of the stem. One's going out this way. On the side over here too. Just where it looks like you need to fill in the white space. I'll go up a bit lighter purple and bring some leaves in over here. I want to go back in the center of my rose. It's dry now, but I'm going to deepen up those C strokes right in the middle. Just so they stand out more. So I'm going to soft my brush with a little bit of water, blend out some of those harsh lines. And add two little leaves tucked in right here. And then I'll call that good. So here we have our two finished little paintings. And all we need to do now is write the names on these tags and add a little ribbon or string to each of them. I'll start with this green tag. And this one is for my son, Graham. If you want, just write in your cursive handwriting or you can try to do calligraphy. I've learned the most from Becca with the Happy Ever Crafter on how to do calligraphy. So you can check her out and I'll link to her below. And this one is going to be for my niece, Emily. Now I picked up this string to match these cards just at my local craft store. And I'm just going to attach it to these with a little loop, flip it through, and pull the two strings through that little loop. 
Not one's finished. All right, and there you have your little Easter basket tags. Here are some that I made previously. Here's our green one, blue one, and the little purple one. These tags are super simple and fun to paint. I hope you give them a try. They can make any Easter basket cute and personalized. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful Easter.